Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Coach John's business training. It's for anybody in any business, uh, any entrepreneur business, or any walk of life type of business it can really apply to. Um, I focus on uh, being a coach because that's what I am and that's what I speak to. But, uh, you know, if you have any um, business savvy, you can pick up on this for your business as well if you're in something else. Uh, if this speaks to you and you're interested in doing what I do, let me know. We can talk. Uh, I'm always adding to my team uh, new leaders. So today's uh, subject is going to be overcoming objections. I get this all the time from my coaches. How do I overcome objections? I'm getting objections uh, from people, cost, time, um, different things like that. Um, so I'm going to sort of give you a template of how to, again, effectively communicate with people and form relationship uh, so that those things not only can you overcome them, but they don't even happen to begin with because the best objections uh, don't even happen. And at the end of the day, and again, all this comes from personal development. Uh, that's what I always uh, push and, and get my team to do more and more of. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's the statistic is like 85% of objections or more are caused by us. We um, kind of create our own objections that people give us based on how we talk to them and how we present things and how we communicate with them. Um, for instance, cost objection, number one thing, right, that people deal with. Well, if I gave you a little black box, right, and uh, I set that box in front of you and I said, this box is $6,000, you're gonna be like, okay, that's great, I'm not gonna have that, you know, I, I can't afford that, I don't even know what's in the box, so goodbye, you know, it's not a big deal. Now, consequently, if you have your child and your child's in the hospital dying of something, and I told you, I have a box right here that has the pill inside that could save your child's life. It's not gonna be how much is it or I can't afford it, it's what do I need to do to get that box? Bottom line, right? What does that mean? It means the issue is never cost, it's value. The more you know about what's in that box, the more you know the value of what's in that box, and not only the value innately, but the value to you as a specific person and what it means to your life and how it could improve your life, the cost objection goes away. So if you're in a business and you're getting cost objection from people, what that means is you're not talking to them enough, you're not asking them enough questions, you're not solving their problems that they actually have with what you're offering, okay? you're trying to sell something and you're gonna feel salesy when doing it because you're not serving them. You're not helping them solve problems with what you're offering, you know? So at the end of the day, we're here to help people. We're here to solve problems. We're here to serve people as opposed to sell them stuff. So how do you get past these objections? Let's say, uh, for instance, you're at a picnic, okay? And these are people you haven't seen in a while. So you go up to Bob, your old friend Bob that you haven't seen in forever, and you're like, hey, Bob, how's it going? I haven't seen you in so long. How are the kids? How's the wife? You know, how's your job going? Oh, well, you know, it's, it's going pretty well. Now, what are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a construction worker. Oh, wow. Well, what are the hours of, uh, about that? Now, notice, again, side note here, right? I'm not talking about what I'm, like, selling or my stuff, anything. I'm digging into Bob's life because I want to know about it, not because I'm just trying to sell him something, because I want to get to know him better and refresh, you know, our relationship and just reconnect, right? So I'm asking him questions, okay? Again, the one asking questions is the one controlling the conversation and helping move forward. If you find yourself just ask, answering questions from someone else, what, is the, what are the ingredients of this or what does it cost? They're controlling the conversation and it's not going it's not going to go anywhere. So if you find yourself doing that, best thing to do is ask a question and shut up and listen because you're it's your job to learn about people so you can help solve their problems and get to know them better. Again, whatever we have over here, whatever product it is, whether it's a Shakeology or it's, you know, wine or a box of, you know, makeup or whatever, it means nothing to the people we're trying to help unless we find out what in their life is going astray that we can use this to help, right? That way we don't feel like we're pushing something on it that they don't need, we're helping them. So back to the story, right? So you're talking to Bob. Okay, oh, construction, wow, what are the hours of that? Well, it's like, you know, seven in the morning to like six or seven at night. Oh, wow, you know, that's a long time. Um, what kind of meals do you get in there? 
You know, I mean, do you have breakfast before you leave? Um, do you bring your lunch with you or do you have to go get lunch? Well, most of the time, you know, I just, I skip breakfast and then um, I just go get some fast food or something. Well, guess what? Side note, right? Cost objection is gone now, okay? Because they're spending fast food every day money. And that's what? Six, seven, eight dollars every day, you know? Every day that they're doing this job, okay? So in our case as coaches, our nutrition costs less than that. Our meal replacement with the Shakeology is only three something. And it's, it's replacing, it can replace that one meal for them, give them much better nutrition, help their energy, help all this other stuff, plus be in their budget, not only in their budget, but improve their budget, right? So that problem is solved now without you ever even having to get into that conversation yet because you're learning about the person just like in my example that I always tell my team, it's like you're being the doctor, okay? You don't go to the doctor's office and the doctor runs up to you and saying, here's this pill, you gotta try this pill. No, 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 no. What happens at the doctor's office? They're asking you questions about yourself to learn what's wrong with you, right? They're building rapport with you to figure out how they can help you. At the end of the conversation, how much do you know about the doctor? Nothing, because it's not about the doctor, it's about the patient and the patient's issues. Now, at the end of that conversation, in the culture I've grown up in, you would eat a, le a leather shoe if the doctor told you to because you trust your doctor because he's built, he or she has built that rapport with you, right? So it's the same thing as coaches, any business really. You've got to build that rapport and learn about what's really going on with somebody and dig into their life so you can really help them so that when you recommend or prescribe a solution for them, it has value to them. It means something right? And you won't feel salesy and you won't feel like you're pushing anything. You're solving a problem. You're actually helping people. And that's what's so fun about what I do as a coach is people ask, well, how can you do this if you're not a fan of sales? Because I'm not a fan of sales. It's because I'm not selling and pushing. I'm helping solve problems for people. I'm digging into their lives and, and learning what's going on and, and helping solve those issues. Now, Sometimes somebody comes along and they're like, I'm just looking to lose five pounds. Well, that's not necessarily good enough. You know, I'm going to help you lose the five pounds, but I want to learn why do you want to lose the five pounds? What is in your life is pushing you to do that? Is it a health issue? Is it a trip you're trying to take? You know, we don't have to go through your entire life, but I want to learn what's motivating you to do that. Because when I find out what's really behind it and what's motivating you, I can not only get you the right solution, I can help keep you accountable and keep you motivated to get to the end of that, right? If there's no reason that I know of, then I can't keep you accountable. You're going to quit. It's all going to go out the window, right? So we're here as any business, especially coaches, to not only help provide something for somebody, but to see them through the journey and to help them support and grow as people not just, you know, a simple product, okay? So objections will go away the more you dig in. If you get objections from somebody when you're trying to kind of complete the, the deal, right, or close someone, then you haven't asked enough questions. That's what I'll tell all my coaches. If you're finding a cost or time objection, any of that, you haven't asked enough questions. Now, <coughs> is it all ruined? No. A no is never a no. A no is always just not right now. Just keep that relationship going. Keep digging in, keep learning about the person and showing that you care because that's the thing. At the end of the day, people aren't really, you know, saying no because of the little objections. They're saying no because they're, there's a disconnect of, of your integrity, okay? It's that salesy thing that so many coaches complain about. They feel that if you feel that and you don't want that. You want them to know that you're trying to help, okay? So... Again, the conversation with Bill or Bob to find out what's going on, how long his job's taking, what's he doing during that, you know, basically where is the money going for these for your person you're trying to help? Because they're spending money somewhere. You know, I tell my coaches, your best friend in life, if he thinks you're trying to sell him something, is going to lie to your face and say, I drink bread and water and I spend $2 a month. It's not because they're hor horrible people, it's because they feel the salesy thing, right? And they're just trying to avoid it and get out of the conversation. So you don't go that direction. You just talk to people as real people. You try to help them uh, and learn about what's going on with them. 
and then you ask enough questions so that by the time you can offer a solution to something, they know you're really just trying to help, okay? So that's the thing, that's the thing for everyone to sort of practice with people is just learn about people, ask more questions, dig into relationships more. Um, and I'm telling you the best solution again to get better at that is personal development. Uh, old school personal development, Jim Rohn, uh, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, these guys have done this for so many years. Those are the people you, you can listen to and read about that they've just had these conversations. They know what to ask, they know what to say. Uh, it's just some little phrases that help keep conversations going like, tell me more about that or different things like that that just kind of help people realize you do care and you're trying to help. So that's my uh, training today on overcoming objections and how to really avoid objections. Uh, hopefully that helped you and uh, I will be back with more very soon. So please like this, comment below, share it with others uh, if it was some value to you. And uh, again, if this speaks to you and you haven't uh, started your own business at all and you're not working with another coach, please let me know. I'd love to have some new fresh blood leaders on my team as well as the people I support now uh, so we can grow this thing and we can make a real movement out of it and help a lot of people change their lives. So this is Coach John. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.